Syracuse, number five, Donovan McNabb. It was a wonderful and overwhelmingly positive return for Donovan McNabb. A huge ovation by this crowd. The fans that he played for, quarterback for the Eagles for 11 years. Now he's with the Washington Redskins taking on the Eagles. And welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I am Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. Pam Oliver's coming up in just a second. So now the answer to that question has been answered. How will the fans greet Donovan McNabb in his return? It was really a nice moment. Now that's over with. And the question is, how will McNabb play? And are the Redskins good enough to win this game? Well, that's what Donovan has talked about all week, is that it all comes down to winning a football game. And how do they go about doing that? To me, they've got to be able to run the ball, something they have not done really all that well yet this year. And yet it's the one thing you thought that Donovan McNabb would benefit from when Mike Shanahan was the head coach because he was notorious for being able to run the football there in Denver. That's going to be important here today. On the other side, Michael Vick, who was his understudy last year, talking about McNabb's. No quarterback right now is playing any better or any more dangerously at that position. Well, Andy Reid came into this season awfully excited about the youth of this football team, and you can only imagine how excited he is now with the play of Michael Vick, where he has really football team has been down in the red zone and scoring points. It was a team that had struggled scoring touchdowns but that's no longer a problem here in Philadelphia. Take a look at the weather it is a blustery chilly day in Philadelphia overcast and there is a significant chance for rain as we get deeper into the late afternoon and early evening here in Philadelphia. So it'll be the Eagles starting with a football and that means Michael Vick. And the number nine rated overall offense in the NFL. And Vic lit it up last week at Jacksonville. Glad you're with us today on Fox. Ellis Hobbs on the return from the goal line. And Hobbs with a decent return out to the 25. Reed Dowdy on the stop. They'll mark him at the 28. And that's where the Philadelphia offense will set up under the direction of Michael Vick. I hope that you had a chance to watch Fox NFL Sunday and the piece that Pam Oliver did with Michael Vick. And it has been really an unbelievable couple of weeks where Michael Vick has looked better as an Eagle in 2010 than at any point as a three time Pro Bowler with the Atlanta Falcons. Starting out of the shotgun on this windy day and he drops it down underneath that is LaShawn McCoy and LaShawn McCoy gets zip. Before the game. Donovan McNabb warming up. And Michael Vick came over to say hi. A lot of hugs from McNabb to his former teammates coaching staff. Personnel that works around this stadium. McNabb's moments coming up a little later, second and ten. Underneath, this is McCoy. A little room to maneuver, and LaShawn McCoy is knocked down inches shy of the 35 yard line, a gain of seven. McIntosh on the stop. And we look at this defense, Troy, and the question is do they have the personnel? to be a 3 4 defense and the guy who's not starting it outside linebacker is Andre Carter instead it's Lorenzo Alexander. Well the answer to that question is probably no not at least at this time but you know a defense that Mike Shanahan believes in that's why Jim Hazlitt is here as the defensive coordinator and that's the scheme they're going to stick with. But he said on third down Vic stays upright. Strings out the play and then throws it away and it's a good start for this Washington defense. It's a three and out. And Michael Vick took a shot from LaRon Landry at the end of the play. Well I can assure you that if LaRon Landry number 30 right there has an opportunity to put a hit on you whether you're a quarterback a receiver or a running back that's exactly what he's going to do. 
Brandon Banks, who was just activated, is waiting for the punt from Rocca. And Rocca hits a line drive. A boomer back to the 10. Banks with some room. Welcome to the Redskins for Brandon Banks, who is down inside the 40 in a terrific start to this game for the Washington Redskins. 51 yard punt return by Brandon Banks. And here comes McNabb. And a different response. <laughs> I thought they, you know, they, we saw the great ovation he got when he was introduced. I thought it would extend to the first offensive series, but I guess, I guess not. The love is gone. <laughs> McNabb almost stumbled in on an end around at Santana Moss, who was dragged down with a horse collar tackle, and that will add yardage. Quentin Michael guilty. It's a five yard run, but a penalty flag. Personal foul. Four scholar tackle, number 27, defense, 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. In order for it to be a penalty, you have to drag the player all the way to the ground, which is what Quentin Michael did. So 15 yards at the end of a five yard run, and this is what set up the great field position, the 51 yard return by Banks. Redskins have been terrible in the red zone, which is where they are now. And they hand it to Clinton Portis, who lowers his shoulder into Ellis Hobbs, a gain of seven. A lot of discussion last week on Clinton Portis and what exactly his health was. He went down in last week's game against the St. Louis Rams on a, on, a, on a nice run, really, and no one within about three to four yards of him. And he took a dive himself. And no one was really able to explain that. It was odd to me because this is one of the toughest running backs. I guess he does have a hand injury and he'll be playing today until he gets tired. And I guess he is now tired and that's why he's on the sideline. And that means that Terrain gets it. And Ryan Terrain is in for the touchdown. And in a blink, the Redskins have come in here with a record of one and two and made a statement here on the road. A 12 yard touchdown by Terrain. Well, Ryan Terrain, he goes right through Quentin Michael, the safety for the Eagles. He's going to be the guy who comes up right there to make the tackle, and Terrain just goes right through him on his way in for the touchdown. And now Gano to make it 7 to nothing, Redskins. Low snap, good hold. That was Bidwell who saved a bad snap so they cheered McNabb then they booed him and then the Redskins got a great punt return and turned it into seven with an early lead well a good start for Washington they get the big punt return from Brandon Banks who was just activated they set up inside the red zone they came in having just scored two touchdowns in nine trips tied with Pittsburgh for the worst in the NFL and touchdown percentage in the red zone and they get a score on a 12 yard carry from Ryan Terrain a guy who had played in only two games prior to last week in St. Louis when he was with the Denver Broncos and Mike Shanahan back in 2008. Yeah, 15 career carries is all he had prior to last week's game the big concern with him Mike Shanahan feels that he's got great upside. It's just a matter of whether or not he can stay healthy. Jorick Calvin is waiting deep for it. First it was Hobbs, now it's Calvin, and he will try and take it out. And he just gets smacked. Lorenzo Alexander, who gets a start at the end of a 20 yard kick return wow. by Jorick Calvin. Let's listen back on the touchdown. That's terrain through Quentin Michael. 
And then Lorenzo Alexander on the kick return by Jorick Calvin. A 20 yard kick return does that. Vic keeps it like a collegiate play, and Michael Vick has the first Eagles first down of the day. 13 yard carry out to the 30 yard line. Well, Brian Arakpo, he's in a perfect position to make the play there on Michael Vick, but that's the challenge. Even when you maintain your assignment, you're in a great defensive position to make a play. He's elusive, and he picks up a nice yardage there. 13 yards for the guy who is number three all time career rushing yards by a quarterback trailing number one Randall Cunningham and Steve Young. What is it? This time the handoff is made and carrying it out across the 30 is Mike Bell a gain of two. Let's go to Kurt Menefee for a game break. It's another former Eagle playing hero now in Denver. Corral Buckhalter with a minute and a half left. Gets the game winning touchdown from Kyle Orton and Denver knocks off the Titans 26 20 in thrilling fashion. Joe Troy and Pan. All right, Kurt, so both teams will leave that game 2 and 2. And here it's 1 and 2 Washington against 2 and 1 Philly. On second down and 8 McCoy. Sean McCoy eventually tried the left side, picked up five McIntosh on the tackle. You know, on that one play that we saw of Michael Vick where he kept it and was able to juke Brian Arakpo and pick up the 13 yards, that's an element of the offense that was expected when the season began and Kevin Cobb was going to be the starter. That's not something that they want to major in now that Vick is the starting quarterback because they want to try to minimize the hits as best they can. Obviously, he's made some great plays here in recent weeks running the football. But the Wildcat package, as they once knew it, is not as big a part of what they'll now be doing offensively. On third down, inside handoff, and short of a first down is LaShawn McCoy. Had to get to the 40, comes up short. And after getting that first first down from Michael Vick, the punt team comes on for Philadelphia. Well, those are two good defensive stops right there for Washington because that's been their problem all season long is Jim Hazlitt's group has just been unable to get off the field on third down. First drive three passes by Philadelphia this one four runs. And now a punt. Banks is ready for another try 51 yards his first crack at it from inside the 10. Brandon Banks is tripped up as he crosses the 20. We'll take a break, come back. Donovan McNabb, a much longer field to navigate with his Redskins on the road, up seven. Today's aerial coverage is brought to you by Direct TV. Trying to keep that thing steady up on a windy day here in Philadelphia with rain moving in. Seven nothing, Redskins starting at their own 22. Off is to Portis. Good blocking out in front of him, and Clinton Portis picks up seven. The guy at quarterback, Donovan McNabb, wore number five in Philadelphia, now does so with the Redskins. And you wonder about the skill position players. At least another threat opposite Santana Moss. Right now, the Redskins don't have it. There's the offensive line with Stefan Heyer getting the start at left tackle in place of the injured first round pick, Trent Williams. Second and three. Blitz coming from Philadelphia. Redskins run it to the other side, and Clinton Portis is out across the 40. And Troy, with all the talk about Michael Vick so far this season, it's been Vick, Vick, Vick. The question I would have is how good is the Philadelphia defense here after three plus weeks of the season? Well, that is a big question. It still is. And after last week's performance, which was pretty dominant, uh, against what was a pretty average offensive team in, in Jacksonville. We still don't have an answer really. The one good offense that we know they faced was week one against the Packers. Here's the first pass for McNabb and he has a man wide open and he misses Fred Davis. This is one of the things that 
Washington does so well. You're going to see Fred Davis. He comes here off of play action, going to the left side. Donovan rolls right. Get the whole defense flowing that way. And then you've got a wide open Fred Davis, and you just got to lay that one in. And oftentimes, the hardest ball to complete is the one when the guy's wide open. Now, wind is a factor here, but just a ball that got away from Donovan McNabb. Here is Terrain over the left side, and Terrain stays on his feet. Takes it inside Philadelphia territory, and so far, the Eagles defensively have no answer for the Redskins' ground game. Well, the Redskins create a lot of problems offensively because of their scheme. They run the zone blocking scheme. They do a good job with the running backs getting in behind that. Last week in the first half against the Rams, they were outstanding running the football. They've come out here today. They followed up with that. And then with that, you've got to defend the whole field with the play action, as we saw with Donovan McNabb, although they missed the throw there to Davis. Here's Portis. This time Philly plays it well, and it's Trent Cole who makes the play. Prior to that, carry by Portis, who lost three. The Redskins had carried it for 55 yards, an average of over nine yards per carry, and that's what you expect when you see a Mike Shanahan coach team. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to run this offense that Mike Shanahan and his son, the offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan, want to run, it starts with their ability to run the football. And once they get that going, like we have seen already here in the early going, it opens up a lot of things then off the play action. Right at midfield, second down and 13. Set up a screen. Portis makes a couple of guys miss. Good play by Clinton Portis still going. Poor tackling and a first down for Washington. Kurt Coleman on the stop, 14 yards, and the crowd is booing, not Donovan McNabb. They're booing the Eagles defense. Well, Jaquay Parker, he comes in. He's got a shot at him right there, and he's just unable to make a tackle. And you know, Clinton Portis expecting to go down. You see him protect the football, thinking that he's going to go to the ground, but he's able to come through that one. And another nice pickup. McNabb has missed on the one deep throw. He missed a lot of open receivers in his time here in Philadelphia. That was more the reaction. From the Eagles fans here as they keep it on the ground. Why not Ryan terrain carries it and this time it's well played by the left side of the Eagles defense. No game. You know I think coming into this game Joe for Donovan McNabb obviously an emotional week. He downplayed that all week long wasn't sure what his emotions would be. But yet you know that he wants to play well in this game. And so with that getting off to a good start early was going to be extremely important now. It hasn't been what he has done. He missed on a wide open guy who maybe scores a touchdown. But the fact that the offensive line and these running backs are doing what they're doing, it's allowing Donovan to settle in. Now they try the left side with Terrain, trying to get to the edge. And Terrain picks up five. Third down and five for Washington. I'm, I got to tell you Joe I'm a little surprised by how much we have seen already of Ryan Terrain. I know in our visit with Mike Shanahan on Friday he said Clinton Portis is my guy even though Terrain came in in the second half last week that was primarily because of the hand injury to Portis and I figured that Portis was going to get a bulk of the carries but they've done a nice job of splitting that right now between those two. First third down for the Redskins. Worst in the NFL third down percentage. This is Cooley touchdown Washington and a perfect throw from McNabb. He missed a wide open Fred Davis but he laid it in perfectly to Chris Cooley for Cooley's second touchdown of the season. Well Cooley just comes straight off the ball. He's going to be on a seam route and the guy who's got to carry that is Stuart Bradley. And he just is unable to get to him. And Mike Shanahan said this week, hey, as quarterbacks, you make your money on third down. Well, good payday right there for Donovan McNabb. This to make it 14 to nothing. And with under five to play here in the first quarter, the Redskins have come out ready to go on the road, an NFC East battle. It's now McNabb and Shanahan in Washington, and they lead 14 zip.
Chris Cooley, that is his fifth catch this year of 20 or more yards. His 32nd career touchdown catch. Now over 4,000 career receiving yards, and it's 14 to nothing. Start could not go any better for the Redskins here on the road at Philadelphia. The Eagles right now in first place in the NFC East at 2 and 1. Calvin on the return. Jorick Calvin got it across the 25. We'll take a break. Come back and see if Michael Vick and the Eagles offense can figure it out. Down by two touchdowns. We ask you to support the NFL's a crucial catch breast cancer awareness campaign by bidding on authentic game day NFL pink products and experiences at NFL.com slash auction proceeds benefit the American Cancer Society. So with that splash of pink on these uniforms whether on the shoes the gloves the towels whatever. Here is Vic out of the shotgun over the middle pass is complete catches made by Avant. McIntosh on the stop and we go back to the touchdown. Yeah, first you're going to see Nate Allen here. He's on the blitz but watch Stuart Bradley. He's communicating to Quentin Michael and because of that communication it causes him to react just a step slower than he otherwise would have and a step that he could have used obviously because Chris Cooley was able to get right in behind them. That's a pretty good favorable matchup for for Washington if they're going to try to put Stuart Bradley on him. Good pocket for Vic who hits LaShawn McCoy a nice move and McCoy's got some room to run still going tripped up by Alexander after a gain of 31 went right around London Fletcher and turned that into a big Philadelphia play. That's just a good job of Michael Vick first of all knowing where he has to go with the football and then it's all LaShawn McCoy. And Lorenzo Alexander what great hustle on his part continuing with the play and then saving a touchdown. Deshaun Jackson getting in the action and you see a lot of that from these Eagle wide receivers helping out with these running backs once they get the ball and break contain. That's LaShawn McCoy in motion. Vic was looking his way and now slings it to Deshaun Jackson. And Deshaun Jackson, who already has six catches of 25 or more yards, which is more than 19 teams across the NFL, picks up six. Well, and Michael Vick was talking about Deshaun Jackson the other day and and said, hey, I've still got an awfully strong arm. And you know, he's never had a problem reaching anybody down the field. But he said with Deshaun Jackson, it takes everything he has to try to hit him in stride. Week in and week out, Deshaun Jackson's the fastest player on the field. Second down and four. Vic flushed out. And now we'll try and get to the edge. Depends on the spot. And they're going to mark him a yard shy of a first down. Picked that's, up three. That's the element, Joe, of course, that we've seen for a number of years from Michael Vick. But what has gotten everybody's attention here over the last two and a half games has been his ability to throw the football and I don't know that a lot has really changed. I know that in watching him and then more importantly in talking with him he's just become a student of the game and he knows this offense and he knows where the open receivers are so he's not as inclined to just tuck it and run when he sees the first guy cover. Handoff is to McCoy and McCoy Ran into a lot of bodies, and as we always say, it depends on the spot. He looks to be short. Well, let's say this for Michael Vick, and we're going to have a measurement. Vick has never had the weapons that he has here with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's a different person, it seems, off the field. He's more dedicated, as you say. He's in better shape. He's got his legs back compared to a year ago. But in his days with Atlanta, there were times where his best option was his tight end, Algie Crumpler. Now he's got Macklin, Deshaun Jackson. Good young running back and LaShawn McCoy good tight end and Selleck. It's a different situation. I would agree and I, I think that you look at most young quarterbacks when they come into the league no matter if they're runners or not. I know this was the case with me that if your first option's not there because you're not real familiar with the offense you are going to be more inclined to run and then as you get a better understanding of the offense then you become more of a passer. And so yes he, he definitely has better weapons but it's also because he's put the time in in studying. Now, I'm not surprised that they're going for it here on fourth down down 14 0. 
And with no more than they have right here to pick up a first down, I, I like this decision by Andy Reid. Four-man front for Washington defensively. A pass on a 46-yard try. What is it? Vic keeps it and appears to have it. You can see the far official say it's a first down with his left arm. And with where his foot is, that's a first down Philadelphia and a conversion on fourth down. But Alberto Riverone is going to call the chains out anyway. There wasn't a lot of push. Michael Vick's going to get it. He, he starts to his right. Just tries to get in behind Max Gene Gillis, the right guard, along with Mike McGlynn, their center. And I thought he picked it up. And he did. Gene Gillis gets the start at right guard in place of Nick Cole, who has had swelling in his knee. Cole is active, though. He's the only backup center. Andy Reid has after the Eagles lost Jamal Jackson he's on IR with a torn triceps an injury suffered week one against Green Bay. So it's a first down for the Eagles. Michael Vick who's thrown for more than 250 yards each of the last two games first time in his career he's done that. Vick over the middle Selleck out of his reach incomplete. Kareem Moore with coverage no flag as Vic missed the open tight end. You know, one of the things that Marty Morningwig has been working on with Michael Vick is is his accuracy and trying to trying to bend that front right leg as he throws and when he's able to do that he throws with a little bit more accuracy and that's a ball that got out in front but here's the right knee that they've been working on you see the bent knee there. And Michael Vick in visiting with him says it's something that he has worked extensively on both before practices and then after practices. Of course, once you get into the game, it's all reaction. Here's a handoff to McCoy. Tried one way. Now ducks underneath. Went right underneath Carlos Rogers and picked up four. I think that's the thing that has gotten lost a little bit, Joe, uh, with regards to, to Michael Vick and, and the way that he has played is. The amount of time that he put in last year he ran the scout team when he got to Philadelphia he was 20 pounds overweight and he knew that if he was going to be the quarterback that he wanted to be especially within this offense he was going to have to work at it and he was going to have to study it and he was going to have to be able to deliver the ball from the pocket and that work has paid off for him. It's third down and six and Vic. Penalty flag flies. Vic has first down yardage and more. Still going. Short of the goal line, but a penalty flag is down back at the 30. And Vic is hurt. Holding number 62. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. And so now with. A repeat of third down Kevin Cobb may have to get ready to go in there and take over. Well you see 62 right here Max Gene Gillis at right guard he's going to get caught holding Albert Hainsworth Hainsworth slips him and tries to come inside and it wasn't much but that was the hold that they got. And then at the tail end of this play is when Vic gets just sandwiched between two guys. It was Moore and D'Angelo Hall and as they came together. Vic went down. They check on Vic, who's on his knee at the 20. But Michael Vic is still in serious pain over on the sideline. A nice ovation for Kevin Cobb as he just went into the huddle. And he's faced with third and 16, and his team down by 14 points. Cobb. Buys a little time, hits Avant, and Jason Avant is knocked down at the 31, a gain of just three as the first quarter expires. Here's the hit on Michael Vick, Kareem Moore, D'Angelo Hall. And this may be Kevin Cobb's team again. 
here in week four. End of the first quarter. Back after this from your local Fox station. They still look at Vic. Meanwhile, this will be the first field goal attempt for David Akers since week one. He's two for two as a pro bowler last year. 49 yard try. Good snap, good hold, and fighting the win. David Akers drills it. 14 to 3. Plenty to talk about with this quarterback situation here today. Back after this. Moments ago, Michael Vick left the playing field and went underneath. He would assume for X rays, whether it's a rib issue, collarbone, whatever it is, he was crunched between Kareem Moore and D'Angelo Hall. So while he's in pain, nobody could dream up, Troy, the narrative with his quarterback situation. McNabb's traded on Easter to a division rival, Washington for Kevin Cobb. Cobb goes down in week one. Vic is a revelation. And now Cobb with McNabb in the house and the Redskins. Here in Philadelphia, Cobb's going to get back a quarterback for the Eagles. Let's go back to that penalty right there on Max Gene Gillis, the right guard. On the initial look, it didn't seem like he had much of a hold, but he sure did. The left hand there on the shoulder pad of Albert Hainsworth, and for Michael Vick to get down this far and then suffer injury, all for naught. A real disappointment. And to go back to your point, Joe, I mean, who would have thought? That if someone had said, hey, the Eagles are going to have a quarterback who's an early season MVP candidate, you'd say, wow, good for Kevin Cobb. You know, and it's just been pretty wild the way this thing has unfolded here in Philadelphia. McNabb with play action. He hits Cooley and with a blocker out in front of him. Good work. By Brandon Graham, the rookie out of Michigan, to shed a blocker, make the tackle a gain of six. We look ahead to the baseball playoffs. This is the final Sunday of the regular season, and the regular season could be extended. But our postseason returns two weeks from yesterday. NLCS begins October 16th, and the World Series will follow in high definition right here on Fox. Second down and four, quick snap, Clinton Portis. And Portis looks terrific here early for Washington, gets five and a first down. Well, he really does, Joe. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot there initially. You got a defender in the hole, and he's showing some real quickness. And, you know, you wonder, or at least I do, what kind of career, and not that his career is over by any means, but what his career would have looked like had he have stayed in Denver there with Mike Shanahan. His best seasons were his two first years under Mike Shanahan, over 1,500 yards rushing both years, and five and a half yard per carry average. McNabb stumbled, he's in trouble, buys time and fires low for Joey Galloway. And that was ugly from the start as McNabb almost fell down getting out from under center. Makes it second and ten for the guy in Donovan McNabb who had 92 wins with the Eagles, nine playoff wins, number one in franchise history. And Touchdown throws, yardage attempts, completions, five NFC championship games, Super Bowl appearance, terrain, nowhere to go. And swarm tackling by this Eagles defense, a loss of four. Well, that's exactly what they needed out of the Philadelphia Eagles defense. And you see Sean McDermott, the defensive coordinator, and you know this is a group that is just now beginning to come together a few new pieces there on that side of the ball Ernie Sims comes in as a free agent of course Nate Allen on the back end as a rookie Brandon Graham another top pick for them and last week they showed some great signs of coming together as a unit. It's third down and 14. McNabb's going to air it out, has a man downfield. That's Armstrong. Armstrong with a catch and then stumbles out of bounds. But how about the completion to Anthony Armstrong on third down and 14 of 56 yards? 
Well, it looked like Kurt Coleman was playing safety for the Eagles and Asante Samuel was expecting safety help. You see he's playing he's expecting safety help. That's why he doesn't carry Armstrong. But Kurt Coleman was nowhere to be found just a busted coverage there by the safety. Anthony Armstrong one of those guys that impressed Mike Shanahan as soon as he put on the film for the first time as the new head coach gets an easy one. Here is Portis and Portis gets one. So a third down and 14 and it's Anthony Armstrong who's in his first year still bothered by a sore groin and Anthony Armstrong went 56 yards to set up a first down at the 15. The Kirk Coleman there I mean clearly he's going over the top but he settles down thinking he's going to help with Santana Moss and and just a blown assignment. Second and nine. Screen for Clinton Portis. Blockers in front. Portis sets up first and goal from the three. A gain of 12, and the Redskins are three yards away from their third touchdown of this first half. An Eagles offense, rather a Redskin offense, that had gone down the field for only four touchdown drives in 33 possessions coming into this game. First and goal. Brandon Banks gets it on a toss and is tripped up. A penalty flag comes in. No gain on the play. Flag was thrown right into the middle of the action. It's a hold. Holding number 74. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Stephon Heyer getting the start in place of the injured Trent Williams. Yeah, making his second consecutive start for Trent Williams, and they're at left tackle. And there's the grab right there with the more. You saw him, he tripped. Tripped Daryl Tapp there. But for an offense that has been struggling here in recent weeks to, to be able to move the ball and, and put the points up like they have here today has been pretty impressive. Porters at the top of the screen. That was the first Redskin penalty of the day. Here's Banks again. And a penalty flag again is thrown. First guy there was Joselio Hansen. Daryl Tapp out there to clean up and a loss of five on the play. There was no flag for a block in the back. Second down. But still a loss of five, and the ball is back at the 18. Well, you see the throw there to Banks, and uh, Santana Moss there was the one who they initially had thrown the flag on, and well, they probably could have kept that flag out there. Instead, they pick it up, second and goal from the 18 yard line. Here is Terrain. Stuart Bradley drags him down at the 10 and let's go down to the field and check in with Pam Oliver. Well Joe Michael Vick left the field in some serious pain and it turns out for good reason. Vick has suffered a rib injury. They're evaluating the extent of it now. So far Vick's return is listed as questionable. Back to you. All right Pam well it was last year Donovan McNabb missed weeks two and three with a rib injury and that's when Kevin Cobb took over and threw for over 300 yards in each start. Third down and goal. McNabb, little pump fake, and dragged down from behind in the play made by Tap. That will bring the field goal unit on to the playing field for Washington. You can see Roy L. Williams here. He's going to run a seam route a little out and up and, and Donovan McNabb has a chance on him right there if he's just let, able to lay it over the linebacker Stuart Bradley but he didn't feel like he had the time or, or just simply didn't see it. And now a 26 yard try by Gano. High snap good hold. And it's a 14 point game again. Redskins add to their lead.
They got the 56 yarder to Anthony Armstrong and come away with only three. Well the Kevin Cobb era is about to start all over again. It, it, <laughs> it has started several times it hasn't has. it here over the last few years. It has last year he got two starts he was man in charge when the season began as they traded away Donovan McNabb to Washington and now like Lucy pulling the ball away from Charlie Brown the wind knocked the ball off the tee. There's Armstrong who kind of took himself out of bounds on that catch couldn't stay in 56 yarder down the right sideline and the Redskins ended up with just three points despite the complete breakdown in coverage by the Eagles secondary. Anthony Armstrong came into our production meeting we didn't ask to talk with him he just decided he wanted to come in and see us and he's got a lot of personality and go down and hold that thing for Gano, <laughs> will you Troy. Well, somebody's going to figure out that's what they've got to do here Byron Byron Westbrook is going to be the one who has to put his finger on the top of the football. Looks excited about it. Who wouldn't be. <laughs> Nine minutes eleven seconds left in the half. Gano hits it. And on a hop it's Ellis Hobbs. On the return crossing the 20 and out near the 25. Armstrong on the tackle. The effect of the wind. It's windy down on that field. 21 yard return by Hobbs. Eagles have it down 14. Aerial coverage is brought to you by Direct TV. And just around the block, playoff baseball will start this week for the Philadelphia Phillies. Top team in the National League and here are the early game headliners the day for Aaron Rodgers and a win. It was not easy at home over Detroit. Tomlinson's not finished a big day for the Jets and T.O. 222 yards and a loss. Cobb drops the snap and now has it batted in the air and that was just plain ugly. Speaking of just plain ugly. Here we are in the booth. It's now second down and 10. Now we get to see Kevin Cobb. You and I were here week one waiting to see how Cobb would play against the Green Bay Packers and now it's right back in his lap today. Yeah and how about if you're Jim Haslett. I mean you've got to be the happiest guy in the stadium right now knowing that you don't have to defense Michael Vick. Here's a handoff to LaShawn McCoy and this crowd is getting restless. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. And here are the San Diego Chargers taking the lead against Arizona. Mike Tolbert five yards out and leapfrogging in the process. It's 14-7 Chargers on top. Tolbert, my kind of running back, 5'9", 243 pounds. Joe Troy Pam. <laughs> All right, Kurt. Well, Kevin Cobb last week was on the sideline watching Michael Vick light up the Jacksonville Jaguars. He said it was tough to watch. He's a good teammate but he wants to be the one out there on the field. He's getting his chance now and he completes for a first down to Avant. And on third and 10 17 yards and a crisp throw from Kevin Cobb. Well it sure was and a great job by the offensive line of giving Kevin Cobb a place to step up in the pocket and then him delivering a perfect strike. I was watching him in warm ups before the game and he was throwing the ball throwing the ball very well in. Michael Vick got his opportunity in week one because of the injury to, or to Kevin Cobb with the concussion and now it's Kevin Cobb's opportunity here today with the injury to Michael Vick. Handoff is to Bell and Mike Bell who has not done much as the backup to McCoy picks up only one and I talk about Jim Hazlitt as defensive coordinator and now what Washington is able to do defensively is entirely different. I mean when you're no longer worried about the threat that Michael Vick presents as a runner. Now these defensive linemen they're able to pin their ears back and come after the quarterback on passing downs and I think you'll see a lot more coverage now than what you would have seen with Michael Vick at the helm. On 
it's second down and nine. Good pocket for Cobb. He comes underneath and completes. That's his fullback Schmidt. Breaks a tackle, went right through Buchanan, and picked up 13 yards and a first down. Well, this offensive line does a nice job. Watch this side right here. Max Gene Gillis along with Winston Justice, they, they form a nice pocket there along with the left side, Jason Peters. And, you know, if they can give Kevin Cobb that kind of protection and allow him to kind of settle in right now and find receivers without being rushed, I think we'll see Kevin Cobb have himself a heck of a day. What is up? They do an end around. It's Deshaun Jackson. And D'Angelo Hall does a nice job, makes the play a gain of only one. Tomorrow, on an all-new house, time is running out for a desperate woman, and the team has only one chance to uncover the truth. It's an intense race against the clock with an ending that will leave you stunned. An all-new house tomorrow at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, here on Fox. That was one of the worst runs I've ever seen from Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> he had a pretty, he had a decent blocker out there, and he just ran right into it. That was the tackling prowess of D'Angelo Hall that made that play happen. Well, D'Angelo Hall, he will come up and make a tackle. Second down and nine. Cobb underneath. Hits Schmidt again. And the fullback who has taken the place, Troy, of the injured Leonard Weaver, a really good fullback and a pro bowler from a year ago, has made an instant impact in this offense. Yeah, the same Leonard Weaver who Holding was the team's number 71 offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That surprised Jason Peters, who's guilty of a hold. Well, let's see if he did. That's Brian Arakpo that he's having to try to block. Got him with the left hand. So a good call against Jason Peters. And that eliminates the reception by Owen Schmidt. Well, a couple costly penalties right here. Of course, the, the one on Max Gene Gillis when Vic goes down. And then after a nice game there by Schmidt, they get Peters. What is up? On second and 18, it's a screen from McCoy, has some room. And LaShawn McCoy is wrestled down right at the marker. 17 yards. Looks to be inches short of a first down. Landry on the stop, but a nice play on second and 18. Well, it's set up very well. You've got Max Gene Gillis as well as the center, Mike McGlynn, leading the way. And then LaShawn McCoy just shows what he's capable of doing in the open field. He cuts it back and picked up about 10 yards there on his own. And now with less than a yard to go in the area where you would have to believe the Eagles would take two downs to get the first down if they don't get it here it's third and one Blue 88. Blue is up. it's McCoy first down LaShawn well, McCoy tripped up by Golston and that is a first down for the Philadelphia Eagles with four minutes to play down by 14 points. Here's McCoy. Nice move. LaShawn McCoy showing what he can do. Down inside the 21, a gain of 13. The Eagles do a nice job. They run a double stack, two receivers on each side, and LaShawn McCoy is going to come out of the backfield just on an angle route. You see Rocky McIntosh comes up there, and he's in a great position to make a tackle for minimum gain, and LaShawn McCoy, again, just showing the elusiveness that he possesses. Pretty safe. One safe one. throws by Kevin Cobb, and it's been effective. Here's McCoy right side, and a good play is made by London Fletcher, a gain of four. I just think LaShawn McCoy, who last year was able to come in and, and really have a nice rookie season. And then he has followed that up by improving in his pass protections, and they're involving him a little bit more as a receiver. A nice, nice deal for the Eagles when you go from Brian Westbrook, and then you pick up a guy like McCoy who 
you know, not quite as accomplished as a receiver, but still able to do a lot Let's of the same types of things within this offensive system. Oh, what you what Second down and six. A screen. McCoy again. Everything close to the line of scrimmage, and LaShawn McCoy picks up four. This has been a drive that's approaching seven minutes in length, one that started at the Philadelphia 25. And while it has been safe for Kevin Cobb, it's been effective and a lot of LaShawn McCoy. Yeah, and I think Marty Mordenweg, the offensive coordinator, has done a heck of a job right here with Kevin Cobb getting his opportunity and keeping things, as you've said, Joe, pretty simple for him, some easy throws, and he's got a lot of completions as a result. It'll be third and short when we come back. Two minute warning in Philadelphia. In terms of time this is the longest drive for the Eagles this season. This is their first trip into the red zone today. It's been the best red zone offense in the NFL. However that was with the threat of Michael Vick at quarterback. Now it's Kevin Cobb third and two. Hand off to McCoy. Good blocking. First down and more to the four. First and goal. Landry on the stop after a carry of nine yards. And now McCoy is slow to get up. If he gets up at all. Well, without Vic, you already lose 40% of your run offense. Without McCoy, you have no running game. So they check on McCoy with a minute 45 left in the half. Sean McCoy got up and walked off the field. So it's Mike Bell in there at running back with Kevin Cobb. First and goal. And it's Bell. To the two. First guy there, Rocky McIntosh. You know, you look at this drive, Joe, and talk about how many plays. That was the 13th play on this drive. Shouldn't be surprised by it. Washington's defense. Leads the NFL in having the most 10 play drives against them. And I know Jim Hazlitt has talked about the inability of their own offense to run the ball, and that's why they've been on the field as long as they have through the first three games. But they've not stopped people as well. The Eagles have converted three of three here on this drive on third down. They fake the end around looking for Selleck. It's not there. And Cobb throws incomplete Landry on the coverage he just kept trying to get it to sell it and it never opened up yeah, and you got to be real careful there if you're Kevin Cobb as you stretch that out you start coming towards the sideline there's a lot of bodies in there and I know you want to try to fit a pass in and he's trying to squeeze this one into Brent Selleck but that's a dangerous throw right there by Kevin Cobb now McCoy is back in the huddle on the field it's third and goal. Hey, black over! Black over! And it's McCoy cuts it back to the goal line. No signal. And short of the touchdown. It's fourth and goal. Well, this was awfully close. We'll see here if they're going to be able to take a look at this upstairs. The question is where was the ball when his knee came down and underneath a lot of those bodies look like the knee is down before he lunged and hit the goal line. It would be a booth review. And that's what we're in a booth review to see if McCoy got in. We'll get the call when we come back. We're in a booth review. We've looked at it a thousand ways. There doesn't appear to be any irrefutable evidence to overturn the call. Watch the knee down right there. The ball seems short of the goal line until now when the lunge is made by McCoy. And again, they'd have to see something definitive to overturn the call on the field. So then if it becomes fourth and goal from less than a foot out, I would. I would expect the Eagles just to try and plow it in there. Well I would too. I mean you get down in this position and you you're down 17 three that you're going to go for it and try to make this a 17 10 ball game. Now Riveron has been underneath the hood for quite a while. Visa halftime is coming up. 
Kurt Terry Howie and Jimmy with scores and highlights from around the NFL here in week four. Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with. Stats throughout. Meanwhile LaShawn McCoy came into this game with four rushing touchdowns which tied for the NFL lead. Came awfully close there. The initial call is that he was short of the goal line when his knee was down. But they're still looking at it. The Eagles have lost a few players. Riley Cooper has left this game with a concussion. Jorick Calvin, a left shoulder injury. Michael Vick with a rib injury. McCoy was able to get up after taking a shot to the knee earlier on this drive. Still no call from Alberto Riverone. You remember the last time we were here, the Eagles lost their fullback, Leonard Weaver. They lost their center, Jamal Jackson, week one. That was the same week that Bradley went down with a concussion, and obviously Kevin Cobb, which opened the gate for Michael Vick to show everybody a new and improved quarterback, showing patience, still having those great legs that. He got back after last season and now he is out of this game as he gets his ribs looked at and this is an awfully long review by Alberto Rivero. Yeah I'm a little surprised by the length of this review because it, it seems like it's a pretty simple call and the fact that he did not score and then it's okay well where's the ball going to be placed and they'll piece several of these reviews together you see the helmet well the ball was not out as in front of his helmet. So it's pretty obvious from that standpoint that because his helmet had not yet broken the plane when his knee went down that therefore the ball had not either. The ruling on the field stands. It will be fourth down. So it's fourth down and the decision from Andy Reid down by 14 points with 30 seconds left in the half. Well, there's been a lot of discussion on the Eagles sideline. A lot of personnel around Andy Reid and Marty Morningwig while the review was taking place. And they're going to go for it it appears. I think they were just trying to keep from tipping their hand there to to the Redskins as far as what their intents their intentions were. If it was ruled a non touchdown. And now a timeout will be taken. By Philadelphia. You can see Andy Reid say, Why did you move it back? And so in this game, let's look at it from Washington's standpoint. Troy, they came in here, they played, they had a good special teams play right out of the gate. Donovan McNabb used the ground game, got him down the field. They went up 14 0. This has been a very good first half all in all for the Redskins. Yeah, I think they've got to be pleased with the, the way that it started and the way that they have moved the ball and, and scored some touchdowns. Certainly the, the one drive they got down in the red zone. You know the problems that they had last week down there resurfaced. But overall I think they've got to feel pretty good coming on the road and having the first half that they have had because this really is the beginning of a tough stretch in the schedule for the Washington Redskins and we'll have them next week when they are at home to the Green Bay Packers then they've got the Colts it will not be easy if they could steal one here in Philadelphia and McNabb's return would be a big lift here in week four. Well this is a big play for both teams here going in before half. And now after sending the offense on the field and calling a timeout the Eagles are charged with a delay a game call. And Andy Reid wants an, wants an explanation. Well they were going to go for it it appears and now the ball is back outside the five. How can you have a delay a game call after a timeout. You know I got to tell you in watching our game last week when we saw Houston and Dallas and other situations that we've seen I, I think the officials overall this year through the first four games of the season have done a poor job of efficiently running and operating the ball game. There's no excuse for what just happened here to have a delay a game and I'm not faulting the Eagles. I think the referees the referee did a poor job of resetting the play clock. 
So instead of being able to go for it just outside the goal line they have to kick a 23 yard field goal in the crowd. The Eagles can't believe it. Watch this Kevin Cobb you can watch in the background. The play clock is right behind him now he's just getting to the huddle. It's at 10 seconds after a timeout. They're going for it on fourth and goal from just outside the one McNabb. Well, the play clock went to zero. The question is how was the play clock handled and when was it reset after the timeout. It's been happening throughout the league Joe. It's a real problem. And as a quarterback you know that once they make the ruling that it was not a touchdown we saw Andy Reid asking them at that time why he, he was saying why was the ball moved back. Well that question has to be answered before you can call play and yet they began the play clock and it makes no sense and oftentimes you know they give the offense the benefit of the doubt to where when the quarterback then does reenter into the game as we saw Kevin Cobb that they'll up it back up to 25 seconds that didn't happen and obviously Kevin Cobb and Andy Reid and everyone else was unaware of what the play clock showed. Typically you put that on the quarterback he has to know how much time's left on the play clock but that clock should never have been running. They were in a position where they had just called a timeout. So they were unable to call consecutive timeouts as they saw the play clock winding down again it gets back to when it was reset. And I would say with where Cobb was coming off the sideline after a timeout that was poorly handled by this officiating crew as you said. On the return it's Devin Thomas and he'll take a knee in a 17 to 6 game. 19 seconds remaining in this crowd I think is stunned at what just transpired on fourth and goal from just outside the goal line and so is Andy Reid and he's more talking Troy about them moving the ball back. Mike Pereira is with us uh, that that had an odd feel to us uh, to it Mike uh, on that fourth and goal. Yeah just re just remember though that what you're looking at is a 30 second timeout and you don't wait for players to come back in it's their responsibility to get in so at 30 seconds that's when you chop the clock that's no different than any other timeout so the responsibility is on the team to know they got to be on the field. So after the 30 second timeout the play clock expires they can't go for it on fourth and goal. They have to kick a field goal in here at the half. It's a 17 six game. The NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Seventeen to six for the visiting Washington Redskins who outside of that kneel down at the end of the half scored every time they had the ball. There are the stats passing yardage is even at one fifteen time of possession is actually dominated by the Eagles they had that long drive that ended in just a twenty three yard field goal. And there was a lot said about that fourth and goal then the play clock expiring I know Jimmy Johnson weighed in on it we heard from Mike Pereira. But our conversation has continued here in the booth and we'll try to get to some of that here early in the second half. Meanwhile the Redskins will start with the football as Devin Thomas waits for it. Line drive and Thomas after a juggle takes it from the goal line. And Devin Thomas can't make the 25. Good play downfield by Omar Gaither. The interesting part, Troy, is that after the review, which took forever, Andy Reid comes out. He called the timeout already, and he's coming out to say, Why did you move the ball back to Alberto Riverone, who's over there explaining it to Andy Reid? Meanwhile, as we heard from Mike Pereira, 
It was just a 30 second timeout and all the while that 30 second timeout is expiring and by the time Cobb got out there the play clock had expired and I think that has to all be sorted out before they can put them on the 30 second clock. McNabb rolls out they've done this a lot this season and McNabb was awfully close to being across the line of scrimmage. It's just an incomplete pass as he was pressured by the rookie Brandon Graham. I mean to go back to that that point Joe to to me to call a timeout and then try to figure out where the ball is Andy Reid wants to know where the ball was placed. You can't call a play until you know the answer to that. So then to be on the clock makes no sense and you know at some point common sense has got to come into play. Here is Portis. And Clinton Portis carries it across the 30 to carry the conversation Troy now into the game. If you're Philadelphia you have not shown at all that you're able to stop the ground game of the Redskins which to this point has been not good at all as Clinton Portis now limps off. And by this point I mean through three weeks this was the 28th ranked rushing offense in the NFL. It's third and two. And you know Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan I mean as long as they are able to run the ball the way they have then they're going to continue to do that and and then it'll open up some of the things that they want to do and have done within their passing game. Timeout taken before the third and two by the Redskins. Well the Redskins called timeout I think primarily to get Clinton Portis back in the huddle and on the field. Portis, there's his day. Seven carries, 37 yards, a touchdown for Cooley. Six for nine for McNabb. It's third and two. Redskins up 11. Quick set up and throw. The pass broken up. Good play by Ellis Hobbs. But a flag is down where Donovan McNabb is down. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 50, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Ernie Sims. Ernie Sims comes in on a blitz, untouched, right off the edge. And man, it looked like he hit him and actually tried to hold him up. At the time that it happened, I didn't, I didn't see anything that warranted a flag and, and still didn't, even with the benefit of, of replay. I thought he came in and and put a hit on him but nothing vicious he didn't launch himself and actually tried to hold Donovan up and keep him from going to the ground after initial contact instead of a hold on third down it's a penalty against the Eagles defense and now Portis right up the middle for 11 yards down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well Joe just an update on Michael Vick he remains in the locker room and will not come out he's definitely done for the day the team has added a chest injury to go along with the rib injury we reported earlier no word yet on the seriousness of either of those back to you. All right meanwhile it's an Eagles defense that is not stopping the Redskins running game at all the Redskins came into this game ready to pound and they are doing it up front. Against this Eagles squad, now the Redskins are left with one timeout as they have to spend their second. And we're not even a minute and a half in to the second half. It'll be first down for the Redskins when we come back as they lead by 11. Well, now the Redskins have only one timeout remaining in this second half. They have a first down. In a moment, we're going to bring in Terry Bradshaw from the studio after this first down play. Here is Portis, and this time the Eagles defense stands up to the challenge. Parker on the tackle, a gain of one. Terry Bradshaw. We already thank you for your time here today and we're not going to make this kind of an interview just jump in whenever you uh, want to make a comment about what we're seeing here. This has been kind of a surprising uh, development so far in this game in Philly. Yeah I mean, it's, I mean the, it was surprising Joe just when the game started when McNabb came out and was it got a standing ovation that was a shocker right there. And since then Michael Vick has been lost to the Eagles with a rib injury now a chest injury also reported. Not a lot through the air from McNabb and he almost threw an interception to Quentin Michael. 
Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what Donovan saw on that play. There was a safety over the top and really nowhere to go with the ball. But he tried to fit one in there anyway. Surprisingly, that was just McNabb's 10th pass here of this game because they've run the ball so well. And don't you find that kind of surprising, Troy? Because this is a football team that really has, in my opinion, hadn't been able to run the football that well at all. They've given up on it early, and primarily just throwing the football. Yeah, and I think that that's why it's helped them so much is their ability to run the ball. And you know, I think as this second half unfolds, we're going to see some more of the play action, some of the stuff like when we saw McNabb miss Fred Davis on there in that first quarter. It's third down and nine. McNabb underneath penalty flag comes in as Cooley is wrapped up short of a first down but there is a flag in the secondary. A big penalty called against Ernie Sims on a roughing the passer. And this one the indication against Philly illegal contact number 31 defense five yard penalty automatic first down. So that's Ellis Hobbs with illegal contact. And instead of a hold on third and nine it's an automatic first down for the Redskins. Well now we've seen this throughout the game both offensively and defensively for Philadelphia big gains offensively to come back because of holding penalties and and then of course this drive alone the, the hit that they call on Ernie on Ernie Sims and then this one on Ellis Hobbs is who they had targeted I think it might have been Asante Samuel that they made that call on. And the bad thing about this, Troy, is that McDermott, the defensive coordinator, you're just you're talking about nine yards, you get a five-yard penalty, but automatic first down. And so a fresh set of downs for McNabb down the middle. This one has no chance and it's intercepted. Poor throw by McNabb and back the other way for Philadelphia is Nate Allen, the rookie. That's his third interception, and Nate Allen is the young player that the Eagles got in the draft with a pick they got from the Redskins when they traded McNabb Terry we saw it a little bit earlier a few plays ago when he tried fitting one into coverage and now you're going to see Donovan McNabb and I don't know what he was thinking on this play there's nobody in the area except for Fred Davis but Fred Davis ran a curl route and even if he had run a go route he wouldn't have been anywhere near where that ball was thrown. Yeah exactly Troy the only thing you could imagine was he felt the pressure coming in from the right hand side. But if you do that either pull it down and and run with it or just throw it away. But I, I, I don't imagine there was a busted route. It was a bad decision. Nate Archie, Allen Archie, just named Archie, the Archie, NFC Archie, defensive Archie, rookie of the month. 30 side, 30. What is that? So that puts an end to the drive by the Redskins and now on first down Cobb looking for anything just throws it away in the direction of his fullback Owen Schmidt. You know Kevin Cobb Terry came into the season as you know week one he's the starter and then he's out of the game and Vic's having the year that that he was having prior to his injury and I don't know about you but I was awfully impressed with the way he has handled himself here over the last couple of weeks. Well, Troy, I think it, he, he did exactly what he had to do. You don't need to stir it up. Say, because well, so many times people will say, "Well, you know, after the year, we'll see. I'm out of here. I want a chance." But I, I, I applaud him for the class that he's shown. Because you know, you're one play away from being back in the football game. And he's back in, facing second and ten with his team down 11. Cobb to the sideline, and now it's dropped by Deshaun Jackson. And it'll be third down and 10 for this Philadelphia offense, which had that long drive at the end of the first half, but cashed in with only three points. Yeah, and was just thinking about the fact that Deshaun Jackson has been pretty quiet relative to how productive he has been the last two weeks. Both 100 yard receiving days with Michael Vick as a starter hasn't had a lot of balls thrown to him here this afternoon. It's third down and 10. Cobb buys a little time and now throws nearly picked off by Kareem Moore. Macklin the intended receiver and it's fourth down a three and out after the Nate Allen interception. Pretty risky throw there by Kevin Cobb doing a good job of eluding the rush. You're going to see the pressure there on his left side. Lorenzo Alexander and, and right there is why I said earlier that Jim Hazlitt has the fortune now the good fortune of not having to defend the run because Michael Vick probably right there tucks it and he likely picks up the first down very easily. Sab Rocket hits it. Brandon Banks on the return. Started at the 20 and cannot 
get around Moses Foku. Terry Bradshaw back to the dessert bar. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, buddy. Hey, thanks for letting me join in with you guys. It was fun. All right, keep, that's TV. Keep up the great work. We'll give it a shot. Back in a minute. So the Redskins have it. They lead it by 11. 11 and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Why not keep it on the ground as Clinton Portis tries the far side of the field and a shoulder tackle by Asante Samuel. Gain of four. You talk about famous Philadelphia returns with McNabb back. Jimmy Fox in 36 with the Red Sox. The great Richie Ashburn in 60 with the Cubs. NHL Hextall, then Eric Lindros in 02 with the Rangers in the NBA. Wilt Chamberlain, Charles Barkley, who's at the stadium today. Allen Iverson in 2008 with the Nuggets and in the NFL, Reggie White. 97 with the Packers and Brian Dawkins last year with Denver. Now it's Donovan McNabb. He hands to Ryan Terrain. Shakes one tackle, can't shake another, and loses three. Stuart Bradley is there to make the play. Well, you look at Washington and their ability to run the football here in this game and, and a couple times here on this drive and the Eagles step up and you think if the if the Eagles are going to have an opportunity it's going to be because of this defense one stopping the run something they've not done a very good job of but then also creating some some more of the takeaways that we saw in that last possession by Washington. Third down and nine. McNabb's got room to run. And Donovan McNabb uses his legs and picks up a first down with a carry of 13 yards. And with Philadelphia tries to bring the blitz, and Washington picks it up awfully nicely. They got everybody accounted for, so he had time to be able to step up in the pocket. And then you see the lane that Donovan saw, and he just takes it. And I think a lot of people this week have tried to compare Donovan McNabb with Michael Vick. And Two completely different quarterbacks, as Andy Reid said all week long. Donovan, over the last several years, has not been the runner that he was early in his career, but as we saw there, still certainly very capable. Redskins are three for four on third downs today. Plus a couple more conversions on penalties. This pass is low for Cooley to the delight of this crowd. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt. Houston and Oakland and running back Arian Foster benched the entire first quarter for disciplinary reasons. Uh, here's a way to get back in your coach's good graces. A 74-yard touchdown run. They've added a field goal since and lead it by 10 in the third quarter. Joe, Troy, and Pam, anybody else in the studio you uh, guys want during your game? Uh, Czar. We want to talk to... How about Glazer? Jay Glazer. His little podium. Second down and 10. To terrain. Asante Samuel puts his head down and just whiffs. Asante Samuel missed the tackle. I don't even know if he touched him. If he did, it was just a glancing blow as he didn't want contact. It's a gain of five. Well, they got him with his right arm. He's about all. You're right there. I mean, I know he's there for interceptions. He's been good in that category, but. Not much contact. It's third and five. Yeah, the Redskins have been good, finally, on this down and distance today. McNabb throws, and it's broken up. Hobbs with coverage on Armstrong. A lot of hand-checking going on. It's fourth down. Yeah, a lot of contact at the top. Anthony Armstrong, a young receiver, as we talked about, he's just got to be able to fight through that contact. And there's, you know, I tell you, that didn't look like much, but they, they call a lot less than that when you come in with the hands and you hit the helmet. That very easily could have drawn a flag. That was Cole. Here's Bidwell. It's a knuckleball. And this is Deshaun Jackson. With a return of nine yards. Eagles have the ball, trying to get something, anything going down by 11. Do we hope you're enjoying today's telecast? 
Starting at the 19. What is that? Deshaun Jackson has one catch. Macklin has nothing. What a good play. Ball comes out. That's Bell. The hit by Carlos Rogers. And they're going to mark Bell up with that forward progress out to the 24. But it was the tackle that knocked him down. The ball came out, and I guess they're ruling a fumble. He picked up his own fumble and advanced it four yards. Well, that was a I big hit. I don't know hit. that he had it. Yeah, I'm not sure that he had it either. It was a big hit there by Carlos Rogers right down low. Uh, I don't know that that was a secured catch. See if Mike Shanahan wants to bother challenging that call. It was ruled in the end a five yard game. Four man rush. Good pocket for Cobb who delivers low but it's caught. Catch is made by Macklin his first catch a gain of 15 yards. We look ahead to next week. Redskins leading here today. They'll be part of our action at home against Green Bay who won. It was not easy at home against Detroit this afternoon. The Giants and Texans, Bears, Panthers, Bucks, Bengals, the rest of the slate, including the Saints and Cardinals later on in the day. That'll be week five here on Fox. First down, what Philadelphia. Pressure on Cobb who steps up, uses his legs. And a penalty flag comes in really late. Thrown by the referee, Alberto Rivero. Holding number 71, offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's Jason Peters who's surprised again. That's his second. Well, just some costly penalties. Take a look here again at Rackpo, and it's that left hand. Well, they got him with the right hand there on the back of the jersey. and. You know the umpire based on where he's positioned right now he's looking right at it. You know that's what he's going to see and you know had the umpire have been lined up where he has been. Historically he never sees that but he's he's staring right at that right hand and on the back side of that left tackle. Here's a handoff to McCoy hit the hole hard and he's out across the 40. It's a nice gain on first and 20 of 12 yards. Well it sure is when you can pick up that kind of yardage when you're looking at first and long and. Yeah, you know, it's something that Washington defensively has done a good job of in this game is slowing Philadelphia down within the running game that you know it would appear that if the Eagles are going to have a chance to score points and, and, and win this game that they're going to have to do it on the right arm of Kevin Cobb. A late spot of the football and Alberto Riverone has them reset the play clock. So they throw that in second down and eight. We had 6 20 and counting left in the third quarter. Blue 88! What is that? Play action from Cobb. This is Schmidt, the fullback. They like him, and why not? He's got good hands, and he can jump to the 41, 18 yards, and a first down. Yeah, they like going Schmidt a lot. The guy's got good hands, and apparently it was a heck of a track athlete somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Was Ronaldo Nehemiah? Was he a was he a hurdler? I don't, I, Kareem Moore just played the role <laughs> of a hurdle. <laughs> Went right over the top of 41, 18 yards, and Kevin Cobbs pumped up to the 41 yard line of the Redskins. Heck yeah! And visiting with Marty Morningwig, I asked him specifically about Owen Schmidt, and he he had a big grin on his face and said, "We like this what guy." And that guy like him too. Cobb throws and the pass incomplete. Incomplete to McCoy. Let's go to Kurt Menefee for a game break. Well, Jacksonville forced Peyton Manning's first interception of the year and then turned it into points. David Garrard hooking up with the tight end Mercedes Lewis on a 15 yard score. And the Jags lead the Colts in the fourth quarter, 21 14. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, so Jacksonville is in a spot. Pick up their second win and send Indianapolis to a two and two record. There's Albert Hainsworth. Four man front. And now Blitz coming from Washington. Good call against it. Good play by Landry. LaRon Landry came up and stopped that play. That had a chance of being a big one, a gain of only three. You know, LaRon Landry is one of the best players on this defense. He and Brian Arakpo, and, and I know Jim Hazlitt 
One at practice on Friday when we were visiting the Redskins. I, I couldn't get over the size of this guy's biceps, Joe. They're about as big as yours. <laughs> and look at that. Uh -huh. And I asked Hazlitt about it. He said, this guy lifts every day. He said he lifts on Friday, he lifts on Saturday. Heck, he'll lift on Sunday before the game. I think he's in there doing some curls mostly. It's third down and seven. Underneath Selleck, he's been quiet. First down to the 26. I mean, Troy, there is nothing downfield from this Philadelphia Eagles offense. But that was 12 yards on third down. Yeah, and par primarily because Albert Hainsworth has not been a factor in this game. And Max Gene Gillis is able to really push him wherever he wanted to. And then they just dump it off to Brent Selleck and, and let him go get it. And you're right. I mean, they haven't been able to get anything down the field. Let's go, let's go. The but two. they've been what very efficient in what they've done underneath. Hand off to McCoy. Ball comes out. No whistle. Redskins have the ball, but I believe they're saying it's dead. Officials are getting together and talking about it. This could be a turnover. And now they're looking for the football. Let's take a look. When does this ball come out? That came out before LaShawn McCoy was down. Chris Wilson was in the middle of it. Washington will challenge this. The officials said it stays with Philadelphia. They really didn't say anything and eventually just marked it down. But watch this ball get knocked out right here before McCoy is down. Then Kareem Moore falls on top of the football. Well, clearly, I mean, it clearly comes out Washington before the is challenging the ruling on the field that the player was down. I mean, Joe, clearly it comes out before he goes down, and clearly Kareem Moore is there to recover it. Golston knocked it out. Challenge. We'll get the call when we come back. Alberto Riverone is still under the hood. It looks like this is a turnover. Mike Pereira is with us. There was really no call initially, Mike, and uh, it seems that there was a clear recovery by Washington on the fumble by McCoy. Yeah, this is this is one of these Joe where you have to win two parts of a challenge you have to you have to win the fact that it is indeed a fumble and then you have to see that there is a clear recovery from uh, from Washington here and you really have both so they're going to reverse this and give the ball to Washington. Yeah and the umpire as you can see Joe see the umpire getting that look that's a foreign look to him if he's back in his old spot and you know the league was concerned about this when the runners going toward the umpire on these draws and runs up the middle he gets a clear look here he doesn't get the clear look you, you can see him tilting his head but going away from him he's not used to that and that's that's one of the issues that was a concern and that we knew that replay might have to get involved in plays that he normally would have got hey Mike let me ask you is there a time limit anymore on these on these referees going under the hood I mean these these are these delays are getting ridiculous. Well I, I'll tell you what the first one I thought was inordinately long um, but remember you get a minute to make you make it minute to make the decision then as long as you need to figure out where to reset it. Well here comes a call from Alberto Riveron. Mm -hmm. Prior to the runner being down the ball was loose. It was recovered by Washington at the 20 and a half yard line. They will take over there first down. Washington will not be charged with a timeout. Clock operator, please reset the clock to show four minutes. Four minutes, please. So they're going to put time back on the clock. That was part of what Alberto Riveron was looking at under the hood. So four minutes are left in the third quarter, and the turnover gives the ball to the Washington Redskins. So, Troy, the minute the Eagles start to get something, they have a conversion on third down. They hand it to LaShawn McCoy. He turns it over. And the Eagles trail by 11. Now the Redskins have the football. Yeah, it's kind of been the story for for Philadelphia throughout this game. You know, th this time it was a turnover, and then previously what we've had is a number of penalties that have killed some some drives where they've had some success. Here's Ryan Terrain. That was well played by Quentin Michael, who came up a gain of two. Next weekend on FSN, it's a college football Saturday triple header. First, the Big 12 takes center stage when Baylor battles Texas Tech. 
Jonathan Franklin leads surging UCLA Troy against Kevin Riley and Cal in a Pac-10 showdown and Colorado goes head to head with conference rival number 23 Missouri college football Saturday next weekend on FSF. UCLA has been on a nice little roll here the last three weeks second down and eight and off is to terrain and terrain is forward progress to the 24 a gain of one Trent Cole in there to initially make contact but he had friends with him. Well we're seeing Philadelphia defensively tighten up a little bit in their run defense. You know, after getting gas for much of this game the last possession I thought they did a nice job and then here on this possession Washington has been trying to pound it since they got off the team bus today they've run it 24 times compared to their season average of 19 times in a game lowest in the NFL coming in. Penalty flag looked like a false start on higher the left tackle. False start number 74 offense five yard penalty replay third down. Higher was getting in his track stance. So I mean, like they were rolling out to the right so he was going to get a head start and see if he couldn't get going. It's third down and 12. <laughs> Two and a half left in the third quarter. Crowd's trying to get into this game, but it has been rather lackluster performance by the home team. McNabb rolls. They keep him to the middle of the field. Now tries the near side and cannot outrun Ernie Sims. A loss of one. It'll go down as a sack in the first as an eagle for the former Lion Ernie Sims. You can see Trevor Laws 93 just does a good job of maintaining the backside contain right there and he doesn't make the tackle but he doesn't allow McNabb to get going up the field and once he had to then run to the sideline the pursuit of the defense was able to make a play. Ugly punt by Bidwell. It takes a good Washington bounce now down inside the 40. You know which team should be most pleased by what they're witnessing here in Philadelphia today? Tell me. The Dallas Cowboys. They're off. They have a bye week. They won last week, their first win of the year. And what they're witnessing here between the Redskins and the Eagles. They have to be sitting back thinking this NFC East is more wide open than we ever thought. And despite an 0 2 start with the Giants playing tonight at home against Chicago and they looked awful last week this division is absolutely wide open. Yeah I think the Eagles and Redskins were saying the same thing about the Cowboys a couple what weeks ago. No doubt. What is that? I mean, it's just not this great division everybody thought it was going to be as LaShawn Jackson at least to this point will try the near side of the field Cobb trying to block for him McIntosh in on the stop. With D'Angelo Hall a loss of one. You know that's usually a futile effort when you try to traverse field and come back the opposite way and Barry Sanders is about the only guy that I've seen who's able to do that with any regularity and make a play out of it. But at one point it looked like McCoy may have some room to run. But that's hard to do with the speed of these NFL players said Jackson that was McCoy and now McCoy gets it on a handoff and he goes backward thanks to London Fletcher a gain of two and this crowd wants to see something from this offense and I think they want to see it more down the field They're they're not stretching the defense at all little different game plan that Marty Morningwig is calling since Kevin Cobb got in the game about 40 percent run since Kevin Cobb took over. You know obviously they typically throw the ball much more than that. But they've protected him a little bit here and then with the shorter throws but no doubt they've got to try to stretch his defense and his defense has been playing still a fair amount of coverage but they haven't been able to hit that intermediate area. Cobb steps up pulls it back down and now loses the football. It is a fumble. Winston Justice is there to try and get back on top of it. Carter knocked it out. Justice recovers the fumble. A loss of seven and it's fourth down. That's the end of the third quarter in this homecoming for Donovan McNabb. 
He and his Redskins on top, 17-6. The NFL on Fox will continue after this from your local Fox. Seventeen six as we start the last quarter here in Philadelphia. Sav Rocca will punt it for the Eagles with Brandon Banks, who made the first big play of this game with a 51-yard punt return early. Set up the Redskins' first score. Rocca's really having a good year. No chance for a return. After a 52 yard punt, how about a little then and now? The Philadelphia Eagles select Donovan McNabb, quarterback, Syracuse University. From Syracuse, number five, Donovan McNabb. That's what you get when you spend 11 years you play hurt you take this team to five NFC championship games one Super Bowl appearance all time franchise leader in wins for a quarterback and now here he is with the Washington Redskins a handoff to Portis for three yards and I think if you wanted to use one word to describe the relationship with Donovan McNabb and the fans here in Philadelphia it would be complicated <laughs> multi layers. Yes. Now Portis is down again. Injury timeout, second and seven for the Redskins when we come back. Looked like an injury to the left ankle of Clinton Portis, who was limping as he left the field at second and eight. For the Redskins up 11. Play action, McNabb drops it for Terrain, or rather Sellers, and the fullback somehow survived that tackle up in the air and went forward for five. And here's Clinton Portis at the bottom of that tackle, Quentin Michael. And now down is Asante Samuel, who was, oh. What is it with these fullbacks thinking they're hurdling everybody? I don't know. But his right knee went right into the head of Asante Samuel, who is now down and getting checked out by the medical staff of the Eagles. And McNabb had Quentin Michael in his face. And. A little banged up at the end of that play. Meanwhile, it's going to be an important third down here for the Redskins as they lead by 11. With 14 minutes left, and Asante Samuel able to pop up and jog off. You know, we talked about Clinton Portis, and we we showed the injury that he just suffered, and and what his career might have been had he have stayed there in Denver, as successful as he was his first two years. You know he has run the ball 325 yard or 325 carries plus four out of the six seasons that he's been with the Washington Redskins. I mean this guy has taken a pounding during his time here with Washington. He is a tough son of a gun but he has aged with all the hits he's absorbed. It's third down and three McNabb steps up throws and skips it to Cooley. Incomplete it's fourth down. I think that's the throw that these Eagle fans have gotten used to seeing over the years is you know when Donovan gets a little bit rushed he has a tendency to really drive the ball down into the ground and he had a chance on Cooley Cooley was open and he could have put it on him Quentin Michael had his back to him and it was just one that went straight into the dirt. Bidwell hits his best of the day Deshaun Jackson from inside the 30. Decent return, good field position to start with for the Eagles, who trail by 11 with 13 and a half to play in Philadelphia. Well, Clinton Portis exits, going to get that leg looked at. Kevin Cobb has got to make something happen right now. He's had four drives, 16 plays, 69 yard drive for a field goal. 
A couple of three and outs, and then an eight play drive that ended in a fumble. All day, here's Jackson, and he is missed. Broke free at the end, and Kevin Cobb missed him, second and ten. Boy, he had him too, and in Washington, he had Washington's attention. Once he gets into the secondary, he's got Rocky McIntosh, and then LaRon Landry was looking him up as well, but he just ran right by all of those guys. And if Kevin Cobb had just put a better ball out there, then Deshaun Jackson makes the catch and had a chance to even score a touchdown. One of the few times they've stretched the field since Cobb took hey, over. Come Still come just on. one catch. Come on. Come on. For Deshaun Jackson. Cobb steps up and somehow stays on his feet, breaks a tackle, and picks up a first down. Good run, tough run by Cobb. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt. Jacksonville seemingly always plays Indy tough today, no exception. David Garrard hooking up with Maurice Jones Drew in the fourth quarter. Second TD for Jones Drew and a 28 21 lead. Less than two minutes to go for the Jaguars. No Troy and Pan. All right, Kurt. What's the hold on? Wait, wait, wait. 390s. Bring it Cobb with time. Penalty flag in the area of a hole. Avant makes the catch. It was the umpire who threw the flag, and it's coming back. Holding number 79. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Still first down. Now Todd Harriman's gets in on the action. But Todd Harriman's right here, the left guard. And this time he's got the assignment of tackling Albert Hainsworth. Easy call, but you know what I've seen. Forget about the hold for a minute, but you know Kevin Cobb has has had some time, and he's just not been able to get the ball out. Whether that's been good coverage at times or just some indecisiveness on his part. So now first and twenty. The crowd won't like that as Lashawn McCoy gets three. Haynesworth on the tackle. Tonight on Fox, an all-new Family Guy asks, what if Brian and Rush Limbaugh were roommates? The impossible happens when the king of conservatives comes to the doggone liberals' rescue. Will this be the start of a beautiful friendship, or will things turn ugly? Rush Limbaugh guest stars in an all-new Family Guy at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on Fox. Cobb has to roll, gets away from Arakpo, and now will cut up field. He's run the ball hard, hasn't thrown it with much precision, picks up 10. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, you saw Clinton Portis lip off the field. I tell you, they spent a lot of time working on him before what looked like that ankle injury from the pictures that we showed, but he has a groin injury. He's questionable for the rest of the day. You see that left ankle getting pinned underneath. They're calling it a groin, so. The tackle by Quentin Michael sends Clinton Portis away, and now it's third down and seven for the Eagles, who trail by 11. Cobb underhands it to McCoy, and McCoy picks up just two. It'll be fourth down. I think you're going to see Jeremy Macklin on this route. The Redskins only rush three guys, so they do have people in coverage. But you know that's an area of the field right there that's about as open as it gets, and they've just not been able to. Kevin Cobb, that is, just just hasn't been able to spot anybody downfield to get the ball to. You see Macklin's frustration as he heads off. Harold Carmichael greets him on the sideline. Philip Buchanan is waiting for the punt from Rocca. End over end, wind holds it up, and Buchanan with a fair catch. Out near the 18 yard line. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket. McNabb and the skins on top in the fourth. Does that say? Up above, our aerial coverage is brought to you by Direct TV. Down below, Donovan McNabb and the Washington Redskins lead by 11, over 10 to go. 
So far, a successful return. That one's in the air and nearly picked off. Off the arms of Sellers and almost into the arms of Bradley. Well, we talked about it a couple possessions ago that the defense, you know, really needs to make a play based on how much the offense is struggling. And what a great opportunity right here a ball that falls right into the lap of Stuart Bradley, and he's just not able to catch it. A break for Donovan McNabb on a ball that went off Sellers. Second and ten. Play action from McNabb. Quentin Michael finally turns around and McNabb is crossed the 25. A gain of eight. Yeah, Quentin Michael, he didn't even know where the ball was. I think he still thought that it was handed off. He didn't know that Donovan McNabb had the ball and had kept it on the on the naked coming back his way. You know, it's such a staple of this offense that if you get the pursuit on the backside overflowing. Then you come out on the naked with the quarterback and of course with Donovan's ability to run he has that option or as we've seen over the last few weeks especially against Houston some of the big plays that they made off of the off of the boots Add the word bootleg to the naked thing. I will third down and two <laughs> McNabb completes and a first down catch by Joey Galloway who has been at it forever in his 16th year out of Ohio State three receptions coming into this game and you know Joey is really their deep threat and so every time he lines up you expect him to go down the field this time he just comes underneath and an easy completion for him but I'm shocked Joe that that he's still playing my last season in 2000 he was with the Cowboys and if you would have told me that he would be playing 10 years later I told you you're crazy play action to terrain McNabb's in trouble. He was out of the pocket was the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think that's the bigger question because I do think he got outside the tackle box. And then it's just a matter of where the ball was when it landed. It was determined that number 47 was in the area. Therefore there's no foul for intentional grounding. Second down. 47 that is. Chris Cooley he's not even in the picture. Yeah it was he was talking about Mike Sellers 45 but but Sellers was on the ground when the ball was thrown I I think these has these fans have have reason to complain. Second down and 10 and a handoff to terrain running left Bradley on the stop. Terrain gets two third down coming up for the Redskins and now time is starting to become a factor for Philadelphia. Well it is and if the Eagles are going to do something then then they need to make a stop right here because we talked about it Washington coming into this game this was a down where they were not very good only one of ten last week in the loss to the St. Louis Rams and they've been atrocious on this down but today they've been very good four for eight plus two conversions thanks to penalties. Third down and eight. McNabb airs it out. Downfield and out of bounds is Anthony Armstrong. Somehow comes down with a ball, but the throw carried him out of bounds. And with 7.51 remaining, it's fourth down. Yeah, and then you just got to keep this ball in play. I don't know if the wind maybe had a factor in this or not, but you know whether it was in or out, that was a heck of a catch there by Anthony Armstrong. But but he got he got by Dimitri Patterson. And if Donovan had been able to get that ball in play and out there, that was a touchdown. Here's that end over end punt. Kind of an odd choice by Josh Bidwell. Not a very good punt. Decent field position for the Eagles after just a 32 yard punt by Josh Bidwell. Certainly the biggest threat on each side coming in. Not a factor. The guy on the left. Moss has no catches. Deshaun Jackson has only one. What is up? Starting at their 35 down 11. Cobb to Schmidt. He's been one of their biggest weapons. And he is wrestled out of bounds with a 13 yard catch and run by McIntosh. I think you go back and take a look at what Washington has done with Deshaun Jackson. They've just kept the safety over the top. He's drawn a lot of attention. 
You know that if you're going to eliminate the big plays, then you've got to be able to somehow slow Deshaun Jackson down and bang him coming off the line of scrimmage, and that's what they've done. They've only he's only been targeted three times the entire afternoon. Oh, and Schmidt has three catches. This catch is made by Avant as the Eagles hurry it up a gain of seven. And all of this, remember, after Michael Vick went down early in the first half with rib and chest injuries. Well, this is the guy right here that they haven't been able to get the ball to. Jeremy Macklin has had some opportunities for some plays. Setting up a screen for McCoy. And LaShawn McCoy has a first down inside the 40 to the 38. He also has a very costly fumble in this second half, a gain of seven by McCoy in a first down. Yeah, I think the two big plays that have hurt the Eagles in this game was one, the delay game penalty before the end of the half, and the opportunity to try to come away with a touchdown, and then it was a deflating fumble that LaShawn McCoy had when they got the ball going on that one drive. Delayed handoff. McCoy's been busy, makes a nice move. And on first down, he carries the pile inside the 31 for seven. Still time left with just under six and a half to go and all three timeouts remaining for Philadelphia. But they hurried it up. Vic rather calm. Throws and the catch is made by LaShawn McCoy. Good for five and another first down. And again, it's everything around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and he's just not really seeing the coverage. I mean, they're playing a lot of two deep safety looks, and so there are holes within that defense that you got to exploit, and they're getting some receivers in those areas, but Cobb's just not unable to pull the trigger. Handoff underneath to the 20 is McCoy. And I think that Marty Morningwick recognizes that and understands that, that Kevin Cobb is just not really seeing the field all that well. And so, you know, they're running a lot of these draw plays trying to pick up positive yardage. And that's taking a lot of time off the clock. Cobb slings it. There is a lot of contact and a flag on Buchanan. Interfered with Macklin. Pass interference, number 31, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. That's only the third Washington penalty of this game. The Eagles have been penalized eight times. Meanwhile, the longest completion for Kevin Cobb in this game is 18 yards. First down. At the 15. Yeah, yeah what's it? Where we at? Mike 59. 59. Yeah. 98. Off, off, off. What is that? <laughs> Top throws wide open, and the catch is made by McCoy. Down to the nine. I mean, you've got to point out also, Joe, that this is a pass defense that came into the league giving up, or came into this game as the second worst pass defense in football. Given up well over 300 yards a game. And the last ranked defense overall, second and four. Again, McCoy. And McCoy takes it down to the five. Depends on the spot. They're saying first down. It'll be first and goal. Four and a half to go. Well, it gets harder. I know you get a completion right there, but. The throws get harder the closer you get. So you had some chances there to kind of spread people out and take some shots. Well, now it gets really difficult. What is up? Cobb over the middle for the touchdown. Selleck. to get Selleck back in the huddle. They're going to go for two here. And Deshaun Jackson's trying to get his attention to get him back in the huddle. Trying to make it a three-point game as Cobb let it go. And I don't know how he missed the umpire with that throw. So far this year, the Eagles have not attempted a two-point conversion. Complete. Pass intended for Avant. 
and that keeps it a five point game. You know every team comes into a game and they know that if they're going to go for two after a touchdown what play it is that they're going to run they rep it during the week and so there was no mystery as to what play was going to be called here and there was never an opportunity to try to get the ball into a vaunt right there he was he was awfully well covered. Back to the touchdown and the fastball that Cobb threw into the gut of Brent Selleck. Makes it a five point game. Meanwhile it was Lorenzo Alexander who got the start at outside linebacker in place of Andre Carter who made the play on that two point try by Cobb to Avant. Well now it's on McNabb four minutes ten seconds left Redskins lead by five and we'll see how McNabb does. Eagles have all three of their timeouts remaining, but McNabb will have an opportunity here to take up a lot of the time left with a long drive. Well, like the two two point play, offenses work on this throughout the off season and then on into the preseason on the the four minute offense in terms of getting the ball and and just getting first downs and then being in a position not to have to punt the ball back to the opponent. And that's going to be the challenge here for this Redskin offense. So far the day for McNabb he's eight of 19 125 yards. One touchdown one interception and his quarterback rating is 60.2 so it's been hasn't been dynamic. The running game has been what's carried this Redskin offense. 121 rush yards so far. Akers kicks it. Westbrook bobbles it and gets just to the 16. We welcome in a new audience joining us here in Philadelphia. The return of Donovan McNabb. Got a tremendous ovation during the pregame. Got his team down the field. A touchdown throw to Cooley. 14 to nothing game. Vic injured his ribs on that play at the goal line. There's a McNabb interception. A turnover by LaShawn McCoy. And just moments ago, a touchdown to Selleck for the Eagles to make it a five point game as the two point conversion was unsuccessful. Sims with a big hit. Carried by Ryan Terrain, a gain of three. And Philadelphia will spend a timeout with under four minutes to play. And as we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, I guess in the way of what kind of, kind of a game has it been, it's been impressive on the ground so far for the Redskins. Yeah, I mean, that's really all they've been able to do. I mean, Donovan McNabb hasn't had to do much, but they've run the ball better than they have all season long. And then you know Philadelphia looking at them the opportunities that they've had they've hurt themselves with the with the penalties and then of course the turnover but I think the ability for them to get down the field on this last possession and get a touchdown at least has put the pressure now back on Washington. Philly with two timeouts left. Three fifty eight remaining. Here is Terrain with Portis injured, a gain of three. Third down when we come back. Timeout taken by Philadelphia. Here is Kurt for a game break. Jacksonville and Indy going down to the final play. Josh Scoby for the Jaguars. It's a 59 yard game winner as time expires, and the Jaguars knock off the Colts 31 28 in another thriller. It's been a good day for those today, Joe Troy and Pam. All right, Kurt, thank you. Here in this game, talk about the second half for Donovan McNabb. He has gone two for 11. And he is faced with an important third down here with his team up by five. Only one timeout remaining now for the Eagles, one for the Redskins. Oh, 
Clinton Portis out of uniform now just watching third and four. McNabb sprints to his right. Donovan McNabb with his legs with a huge Washington first down. McNabb carries it for 18 yards. Well, they don't have contain. You're going to see here the defensive end. They run the zone dog, and so he's just trying to look up the receiver, and that opens up then the edge for Donovan McNabb. And if anyone should know what Donovan McNabb is capable in that situation, it would be the Eagles, and they would be able to contain him, but nobody there to hold him in the pocket. He does run out of bounds, which stops the clock as he was signaling his own first down. And now Ryan Terrain carries it for three, but an 18 yard run by McNabb, who did it so many times for the Eagles, does it against them on third down and four. Yeah, but you're right. I mean, when he breaks contain, he's got to stay in bounds. I mean, for him to pick up the first down and then run out of bounds and stop the clock it makes no sense. Eagles are now out of timeouts. And the OT is coming up right after this game. It's presented by Lowe's. We are in week four of the NFL season. Plenty to talk about. Some interesting games that have already happened. A lot to talk about in this one. Second and seven. Andy Reid's Philadelphia Eagles started this day on top in the NFC East at two and one. Redskins are coming off back to back losses at home against Houston and at St. Louis. Here is Terrain. And Terrain, good for 10 in a first down. And up front, this Washington offensive line playing without Trent Williams, with Stefan Heyer starting at left tackle and Lichtensteiger at left guard. They've done a good job. Well they have and I think that you know the jury was out on this Philadelphia defense as to how good they were after having played the Detroit Lions and, and then the Jacksonville Jaguars last week and you know good defenses make stops in these situations especially when you know what the opponent is going to do and they're going to run the ball and they're going to try to take time off the clock and yet the Eagles have been unable to do that. Here is Terrain trying the left side. Ryan Terrain to the 40. And if we came in Troy talking about this Philadelphia defense which we touched on saying all the conversations been about Vic with the Eagles so far how good is this defense the answer comes in today not very good after a strong showing last week in Jacksonville really at home disappointing these fans and that's really been the question coming into the season you know you felt that the Eagles have have a chance and had a chance to be really good offensively if they got good play for, at the quarterback position they've had that with Michael Vick didn't necessarily get it today with Kevin Cobb but defensively they've got to be better than what they've shown here. False start against Washington. But I think you got to give credit also False to start, number 74 offense five yard penalty second down as you did Joe to the, the to this offensive line and you know it's only a matter of time it's just it's just hard to imagine this team not being good running the football with Mike Shanahan as the head coach of course Kyle Shanahan the offensive coordinator but this group up front a group that has been you know pretty much criticized here through the first three games has had a, had themselves a heck of a game here this evening. Eight rushing first downs in this game for Washington after having a total of ten in the first three games. A gain of two by Terrain on the left side and that'll take us to the two minute warning. It'll be third down when we come back for the Redskins who lead by five. A new audience so a game summary there's the day in the return for Donovan McNabb one touchdown one interception but it's been the running game of the Redskins that's been the difference. Michael Vick left early with rib and chest injuries and here is a hold by the Philadelphia defense as Terrain gets three and it'll be fourth down. Here's the injury to Michael Vick between Kareem Moore and D'Angelo Hall. A rib injury they added a chest injury to it and he left early Kevin Cobb has not shown much 
And so Troy that whole drama will continue with Cobb being named the starter coming into the season having the concussion Andy Reid saying Cobb would remain the starter then he went back on that said Vic would be the starter Vic's hurt now Cobb's the guy left and he missed some open receivers and didn't show a whole lot here today. Well he was 19 of 26 or, or is at this time but yeah I, I you know I think some things have happened to Kevin especially going back to week one to where he's been very very conservative with his decision making and where he's going with the football. And because of that they've not been able to get the ball down the field so statistically you'd say wow he's completed a lot of passes they just haven't gone for very much you know and so there's obviously now they get the ball here he's going to have to get the ball down the field in big chunks something that he's been unable to do throughout this game Washington took the timeout so a minute 14 remains and the Eagles will have to get the ball into the end zone they have no timeouts left. Bidwell puts the nose of the football down and that punt is going to be marked out of bounds all the way up at the 26. Not a very good effort by Josh Bidwell who was unable to punt last week injuring his right hip during the pregame warm ups in St. Louis. And while we look at Cobb Troy how about a word about Jim Hazlitt the defensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins all the talk about the three four the four three Haynesworth. Carter not even starting in this game. He's figured something out here today because they've been much better after struggling last week in St. Louis. Yeah, they got Michael Vick out of the game. <laughs> that helped. They need 74 yards in 67 seconds and nearly picked off by Carlos Rogers. Deshaun Jackson the intended receiver and Jackson has not been a factor at all today. Well Carlos Rogers could have ended it right here. And that's kind of been his deal throughout his career. He's a good player a solid player but. Well he has not made the most of his opportunities for interceptions when they've come. Only one catch today for the intended target there Deshaun Jackson second down. Jackson. No timeouts left, and Cobb on the completion gets nine. Jackson went down before getting the first down. Hey, first down, first down. Bro. Cobb rolls out, throws, pass caught for the first down, Selleck to the 45. Thirty seconds left. And with everything being so close around the line of scrimmage it's at least easy for the Eagles to get back get set and clock the football. For Kevin Cobb. Yeah a couple of things here though Joe is that you know you saw players moving and when you're trying to. Get a receiver from one side of the formation to the opposite side of the formation you're losing valuable time so that took some seconds off. And now Washington's going to play deep. I mean, they're not going to give up anything big. But you got to force a ball down there. You can't come underneath to anyone. You've got to make a throw, and somebody's got to make a play. Here's one for Selleck. Penalty flag flies as Selleck had the pass thrown behind him. Couldn't make the connection. And it's a hold against Washington. Holding number 31, defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. It was on Jeremy Mac it was on Philip Buchanan, but it was against Jeremy Macklin where the flag came from and they had a chance there had he been able to lead Selleck up the seam. Instead, that was a ball that, that got away from Cobb on his back shoulder in a difficult catch there for Selleck to try to make. 26 seconds left. Passes high and through the hands of LaShawn McCoy. And he missed Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson is open by 20 yards. And and Kevin Cobb's just immediately coming underneath. You see right there, I mean, you can't go out one-on-one -on -one 
on a March day out on the practice field and get a receiver any more open than what Deshaun Jackson was right there especially in this situation but. You know Kevin has just been content coming underneath but like I said it's too late for that you've got to force something up the field whether it's covered or not. Here's one down the middle and it's batted away by McIntosh. Selleck the intended receiver now only 17 seconds remain. Well that's a throw that that Rocky McIntosh there's gonna be a lot of work for for Kevin Cobb this week find out what Michael Vick situation is but even on that ball there a linebacker in that position should not have been able to get a hand on the ball. That's a throw that you've got to be able to lay over the top of him and not a necessarily difficult throw to make. Here's one for Jackson incomplete. And now it's fourth down and it is obvious. That Cobb will need the work he will get during the week, and it will be up to Andy Reid to try and rebuild what he has left here at quarterback in Kevin Cobb while Michael Vick finds out the severity of the injury to his ribs. Well, I know over the last two and a half weeks with, with Michael Vick at quarterback, this has been an offense that has been extremely explosive and has made a lot of big plays. But they didn't get any here this afternoon. This should be a fun day on the OT presented by Lowe's. A lot of great finishes around the NFL here in week four. Here's Deshaun Jackson in its lateral time here in Philadelphia. It's McCoy who's out of bounds, and it at least gives the Eagles one shot at getting it into the end zone. And now you got Deshaun Jackson. He's slow to get up, and he's grabbing his side as well. The ball is at the 32. Jackson's going to the huddle. Remember Philadelphia doesn't have any timeouts remaining. Well you've got to throw this one in the end zone don't you. <laughs> yeah I think uh, it's time to stretch the field. Buys time and throws. In the end zone, the ball is picked off by D'Angelo Hall. Batted around, and that's how the game will end. And Donovan McNabb is successful with his Redskins in the return to Philadelphia. They had a shot at it, a wide open shot at it with Avant, but he could not make the catch. Yeah, Jason Avant, he had a great opportunity to pull that one in, hit him right in the hands. No. No deflection or anything. He's just unable to make the catch. Our booth statistician Ed Spita tells me that Donovan McNabb finishes with a quarterback rating of 60.2. But he's a winner in his return to Philadelphia. Back after this, Skins win it by five. This is the beginning as you watch Donovan McNabb and Andy Reid. Share a hug at midfield after this game. The beginning of a real tough stretch in the schedule for the Redskins and a big win on the road at Philadelphia. Donovan McNabb return or no, they get a division win. Our Domino's stat tracker. There's the day for McNabb. It wasn't dynamic, it was just enough. Terrain 70 yards on the ground. LaShawn McCoy was busy for Philadelphia. In the end, it's a five point win for Washington. The OT presented by Lowe's is coming up. They have got a lot to talk about, not just with this one, but with a wild week four around the NFL. Stay tuned, coming right up, the OT. Back to the OT presented by Lowe's. Of course, most of you just saw the Redskins upset the Eagles today, 17-12. So let's send it back to Philadelphia, where Pam Oliver caught up with the returning hero, Donovan McNabb. First thing, what did you think of the reception that you got that lasted all of like three seconds? Very warm, uh, very warm. I, I, I think, you know, I've always said that I enjoy playing here, and uh, 11 years is one that you can't forget. And, uh, you know, and I, I was just kind of overwhelmed with it. Um, you know, again, it, when you come back to a, a place that you spent so much and gave all that you had, um, you know, and to get received like that, that, that says a lot. I know you'll say that this is good for our team, but I just want to know what this means to you personally. Again, I mean, you said it. it it's 
basically about the team. I mean, you know, it's not about the personal accolades or how many yards you rushed for or, or who you all did what. We won the game. And uh, right now we're 2-0 in our division and puts us at the top. So that's the most important thing. But personally, uh, you know, again, I prepare to try to win every game. And, and no matter if it's against the Eagles, the Giants, whoever it may be, um, you know, I'm excited about this. This has to be special. Has to be. It'll be special when we get on the plane. Um, you know, but as of right now, I'm just happy about the win. Thank you. All Appreciate right. it. Kurt, back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Pam. Well, Donovan always says the right thing, so no surprise that he tells Pam Oliver that this was no big deal. You wonder what he told his teammates once he got back inside the locker room. Don't have to wonder anymore. Here's a look. Number five. Yeah. This right here defines team, man. This defines team. You know, despite whatever's happened in the last couple of weeks, this right here showed how tough we really are. Yes, Defense, I, we really appreciate you. In the second half, for us. Offensively, we're going to get it together, and it starts with me. But I just want to say definitely, this right here defines team. And this was something we can feed off of going into the rest of the season. We are number one in the NFC, so we're going to stay up there. <laughs> Everybody make mistakes in their lifetime, and they made one last year, so. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. 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 Absolutely.